hi students hope you all are well and join at your places by staying safe at home today we are again here for business studies lecture till now we had discussed our first unit that is evolution and foundation of business hope you have completed your assignments given in the end of those videos so now be prepared with your notebooks and pen and please write the main points so that you can get more benefits with these lectures so today i am going to discuss various forms of business organization business activities can not be performed in isolation these have to be organized in an appropriate form forms of business organization are essentially the forms of ownership of business ownership involves capital investment management and sharing of profits so whenever business has to be started a very important decision which a businessman has to take care that is about the choice of the form of organization and the most appropriate form is determined by verifying its merits and demerits that is limitations so different forms of business organizations are like this as shown in this picture it includes sole proprietorship we can also say sole tradership second is hindu undivided family business or joint hindu family business next is partnership then cooperative societies and joint stock company each of these form of business organization is having its own advantages disadvantages we will discuss all these forms and now today we are to begin with first of all sole proprietorship now what do we mean by sole proprietorship the term sole means only and proprietor means owner hence a sole proprietor is the one who is the only owner of the business it refers to a form of business organization which is owned managed and controlled by an individual who is the receiver of all profits and bearer of all risks that is losses it is also known as sole trader individual proprietorship this is the very oldest form of business organization now we will start discussing details about this form of business organization by analyzing its features merits and demerits this type of business i had already told you is the simplest form of business organization and it is also very common in especially those areas where personalized services are required such as beauty parlors or small scale activities like running a show in a local in a locality so as far as the features of sole proprietorship is concerned first is formation and closure this business is very easy to start because no legal formalities are required to start it now in some cases we can say if there is requirement to get a license then getting a license is the only requirement 
there is no separate law that governs sole proprietorship and it can easily be closed when the businessman is interested so there is ease in formation as well as closure of its business second is liability the liability of the businessman that is sole proprietor is unlimited it simply means the owner is personally liable for payment of debts if assets of the business are not sufficient to meet all debts in very simple words his personal property may be sold to pay business debts if debts exceeds the assets of the firm means he is not liable to pay his debts only from his business funds he has to sell his personal property to repay those debts next is sole risk bearer and profit sharing as individual proprietor is the sole owner who is responsible for all the business affairs any risk of failure of business is to be borne by all alone him similarly if business is getting successful he will receive all the business profits which is treated as a direct reward for his risk bearing next is control sole proprietorship is one man show that is right to run the business and to make all the decision are absolutely with the sole proprietor he can carry out his plans without any others interference and no separate entity sole proprietorship has no legal existence in the eyes of law law no distinction is made between the firm and the proprietor business and businessman are treated as the same as a result owner is held responsible for all the activities of the business and next is lack of business continuity as business and businessman are one and the same entity death physical ailment or insolvency that is incapability to pay their debts has a direct effect on the business and this may even lead to closure of the business if one person is running its business because after his death after his insolvency no one is there to run that business that business has come to an end so this is all about the features of sole proprietorship next we are to discuss the merits what are the advantages of this form of business organization it also it also have its some advantages quick decision making the decision which are to be taken by the owner are made quickly because he has not to consult with others and these timely decisions help him to take advantage of market opportunities whenever they arise second is secrecy of information as proprietor has the individual decision making authority that enables him to retain all information related to business activities confidential so sole trader is also not bound by law to publish firm's accounts he need not to tell anybody to publish firm's accounts so informations are kept as secret and third advantage is direct incentive 
the owner enjoys all the profits of business as there is no one else to share earnings of the business nx is sense of accomplishment sole proprietorship provides personal satisfaction to people who want to be self employed and as the owner himself he is responsible for the success of business it not only provides him satisfaction but also creates a sense of accomplishment and confidence next is ease of formation and closure this is the very important merit bahut hi zyada aasan hai is tarah ke business ko shuru karna aur use khatm karna so these are the advantages of sole proprietorship business which we had carried even from the features of sole proprietorship now some demerits disadvantages limitations of this form of organization is also there which includes limited resources or limited capital resources of the proprietor are limited because he is investing in his capital out of his personal savings and borrowings due to lack of resources sole proprietorship is generally of small size with low growth rate we can say that's why it is one of its drawback or demerit second demerit is limited life of a business concern in the eyes of the law owner and the business are considered one and the same because they are having same business entity so sole proprietorship doesn't enjoy continuity of life illness death or insolvency of the owner affects the business and can also lead to its closure third drawback is its unlimited liability the liability of the owner is unlimited that is he is liable for all the debts of the business if business fails or debts exceeds the business assets then creditors can recover their dues not only from the business assets but also from his personal asset this is a very biggest disadvantage of sole proprietorship next is limited managerial ability however managerial ability of the single owner is limited as he cannot possess all the qualities and not likely to be an expert in all matters of the business he may be perfect in particular activity but not perfect in another types of various activities also due to limited resources the owner cannot use services of professional and expert people which affect the working of his business so these are the drawbacks demerits or disadvantages of sole proprietorship now we came to know all the sole proprietorship suffers from various shortcomings still it is chosen by many entrepreneurs due to its advantages this form of business organization is the best suited for businesses which are carried out on a small scale and where customers demand personalized services customized services now next form of business organization which we have to discuss is hindu undivided family business or joint hindu family business this business is a unique form of business organization which is found only in india and in india it is governed by the provisions of hindu law 
that is the Hindu Succession Act 1956. It is also one of the oldest form of business organization in the country. It refers to a form of organization wherein the business is owned and carried on by the members of the Hindu undivided family. Hindu undivided family simply means where all the members of the family are living all together. That is the basis of membership in the business is birth in a particular family and three successive generations can be member in the business. This business is managed and controlled by the eldest male member of the family who is known as Karta or Mukhiya or manager. All the decision regarding the business are to be carried by the Karta only. Whereas all members have equal ownership right over the property of an ancestor and the, they are known as co parsons In joint Hindu family business, there are two systems of inheritance according to the Hindu law. One is Daibhag system, second is Mitakshara system. Daibhag system prevails in West Bengal. According to this system, both male and female members of the family are allowed to be co parsons In Mitakshara system, this system prevails all over India except West Bengal. And under this system, only the male members are allowed to be co parsners in the business. co parsners are the members who have equal ownership right over the property of an ancestor. Next is about the features of this joint Hindu family business. First is same basis that is formation. For formation of Hindu undivided family business, there should be at least two members in the family and there must be some ancestral property inherited by them. There is no need for any agreement between the family members as membership arises by the virtue of birth. Now the liability. The liability of all members except Karta is limited to the extent of their shares, shares in the property of the business. However, the Karta has unlimited liability. That is, his self-acquired property can also be attached for paying the debts of the business. Means if he has to pay the debts and these are not recovered from the business assets, then he has to pay off these debts from his self-acquired property. And control of the family business lies within the hands of the Karta. He is authorized to manage the business and it is he who, who takes all the decisions and his decisions are binding on the other members. Next is continuity. This form of business is not affected by the death of the members. In the case of death of Karta, the next eldest male person in the family becomes the Karta, leaving the business stable. However, the business can be terminated with the mutual consent of the members. If business has to come to an end, it has, it has to come an end with the mutual consent of all the members. And minor members, next feature, minors that is under the age of 18 can also be the members of this business because in this business membership occurs due to birth in the family. So Karta is the most active member in case of 
joint Hindu family business. It is clear to all of us. Now analyzing the pros and cons that is merits and demerits. As far as the advantages of this type of business organization are concerned. So first of all, we'll discuss effective control. Centralized management in the hand of Karta helps in discipline management because it avoids conflicts among members as no one can interfere with his right to decide. It also leads to prompt and flexible decision making. Means he himself has to take all the decisions. Next is continued business existence. In this form of business organization, the business enjoys stability in its existence. Death of the karta will not affect the business as the next eldest member will, the, will then take up the position of the head of the family. Then operations are not terminated. In this way, business is continued. And above all, liability of the members is limited. Only the liability of karta is unlimited, whereas all the co-partners are having limited liability. Hence, interest of all members are protected. Next is increased loyalty and cooperation. As we know, this business is run by the members of a family. So there is a great sense of loyalty towards one another. There is a direct relation between efforts and reward. So Karta and all family members try to put their best efforts to increase the profits and reputation of their business. In addition to all these advantages, this form of business organization also enjoys the benefits of goodwill, that is good reputation in the market, name, contacts, etc. Next is the drawbacks, limitations of Hindu undivided family business. There are so many limitations of this form of business organization as limited resources. This form of business organization faces the problem of limited capital because it depends mainly on ancestral property. So this limit the scope of expansion of business because business faces shortage of funds. Next is unlimited liability of Karta. The Karta is not only the sole bearer of the responsibility for decision making and management of business, but also suffers due to unlimited liability for the business. Loans. His personal property can be used to repay business debts. And next is dominance of karta. The sole control and management of business is in the hands of the karta that is mukhiya. So sometimes such a monopoly control is not acceptable to other members. There are few members in the family who are not accepting their monopolistic control. So this may cause conflict amongst them and may even lead to breakdown of the family unit and last is limited managerial skills as karta has to perform all the functions all the activities of the business so he may not be an expert in all activities his skill is limited and this may adversely affect the functioning of business and also 
it may result into poor profits or even losses so this is all about features of joint hindu family business its merits demerits as far as present scenario is concerned so the hindu undivided family business is on the decline because of its decreasing numbers of hindu undivided families in the country so today in this lecture we had discussed about the various forms of business organization especially sole proprietorship and joint hindu family business now this time for discussing questions for practice so here are the questions which you need to be practice and make assignments for these question number 1 discuss the two systems of inheritance under hindu undivided family business question number 2 discuss various characteristics of a hindu undivided family business third question is briefly explain the following terms in brief karta ancestral property co partners i have discussed these things in lecture question number 4 despite of many limitations of size and resources many people continue to prefer this form of organization over other forms of business organizations why identify and explain the reasons for supporting your answer next question is mention the types of businesses in which sole proprietorship would be suitable any five last question is what is the basis of membership in the joint hindu family business so these are the questions which you need to note down and make assignments hope you have got to this lecture by meet you in next videos okay